My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to save you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. Cash? Cash is rock. Okay, we say cash is king when the market is so ugly that you just want to get out now. Sell, 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 sell. I can't endorse that here because I like the market longer term. But after a session where the Dow dipped 43 points, the S&P inched up 0.02%, NASDAQ advanced 0.1%, I'd be lying if I told you I feel great about this market. What's wrong with it? Well, earnings tonight for one, and especially the forecast, and we're going to get to those. But let's start with what I think is the real elephant in the room. Let's start with the bond market, which, of course, is much bigger than the stock market, as I always tell you. And its power bleeds into the stock market every day and has been bleeding in a bad way. How does it do that? Simple. When the government sells bills, notes, and bonds to pay for the deficit, it really weighs on everything. Consider it a gigantic sideshow that can really hurt your portfolio. Just this week, you've got a huge $44 billion seven-year bond auction. That's tomorrow. On top of today's $70 billion five-year note auction, that, that's an awful lot of bond supply, especially on top of the $69 billion sale of two-year notes we got yesterday. Talk about cash is rock. The bond market now has gotten so compelling to so many people because it's been going down that they want to buy some of these bonds, which means they often need to sell stock in order to swap out of equities and into the bond market. They have to raise cash to buy bonds. Makes sense, right? You need a lot of buyers to come in and buy these bonds because so much is being for sale. And for many, that means to cash your stocks sell, 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 sell. in order to be able to buy, buy, buy. the bonds. Now, I know that treasuries are risk-free. Terrific. And if you think that the Fed will eventually cut rates this year... <laughs> Well, then the two-year, it was a really interesting piece of paper, around 5%. I bought some yesterday. But remember, I can't buy stocks. Two-year, good. But how about this five-year note with a 4.66% yield? That was today's business. Or the seven-year yield? Seven-year, which I think is going to be similar tomorrow? Sorry. To me, they are not real value. I want a higher yield going out further. Others will, too. And if that's the case, then bond yields will have to move higher price to bonds, lower, okay, to bring in more buyers. The impact on the bond market and then the stock market would be immediate. In a world where long-term bond yields keep climbing, stocks will head down, like they always do when rates go up. Even if rates are going up because of too much supply issued all at once from the government and not inflation and not because of a lack of demand by buyers. We had three big declines this year, all related to the bond market. The Treasury Department can't just issue short-term paper, so it separates out the years and does it that way. But each auction has its own character. I wonder how many people tomorrow want to lock in at almost 4.7% rate for seven years. The one thing I do know is I can't gauge that. What it means is you got a total wild card, right? A total wild card in the bond market that can impact stocks? Bonds need to go up in price and down in yield with this heavy schedule of bond issuance. I think we're going to get the opposite of that. That makes me concerned, which brings me to the second reason why cash is rock. There are plenty of stock people who only believe that the only thing that matters is earnings. Earnings truly matter more than anything else. If earnings are great, then stocks will go up. And very often that is true. A bunch of stocks have done well after reporting good numbers this earnings season. Hey, last night, Texas Instruments said inventories and some types of its chips have finally been worked off. There have been a big glut in semiconductors for the auto industry. With that glut worked off, Texas stock exploded higher today. That sent up the other auto-related chip makers, like on semi microchip. Okay, I get that. Tesla stock has hit the whole year in what felt like a death spiral. However, when Elon Musk told a good story about how he'll have cheaper electric vehicles and a viable plan for robo-taxis, people went nuts, and the stock shot up 12%. And you knew he was going to do that. He did pull the proverbial out of the hat, like I told you. Although Tesla's actual numbers were suboptimal, Musk is great at pitching these things. Wow, is he a compelling salesman. Nothing matter with that. But these winners feel like they're one-offs to me. I don't know about you. And there's no doubt in my mind that if we get a sloppy Treasury auction tomorrow, then these stocks will give up those gains. By the way, I also see Meta and IBM down a great deal in after hours. I know that Meta's quarter was strong, but the guy was weak. More on that in a second. It could be an opportunity if he gets hit too hard, even though it's way above my basis for the charitable trust. Now, I'd feel more bullish if the market were what we call oversold. But my gauge that I use is called the S&P Short Range Oscillators from Market Edge, and it is barely oversold at minus 1.66. Minus 5 means there's too much selling pressure and we are due for a bounce. We're no year, nowhere near that. We don't have that situation. Uh, that means, you know what? We don't have the wind at our back. Cash would be king if we were overbought right here. 
We can't be that negative for the market. Somewhat oversold, though. Hence why cash is still rook. All right, let's talk about Meta, because that's all anyone's going to be talking about tomorrow. I'll let you give you a preview. The actual quarter is very, very strong. Sizable sales and earnings speed, healthy advertising numbers, solid 7% user growth. However, the stock's getting eviscerated in after hours. Sell, sell, sell. Because people didn't love the guidance. Meta's second quarter revenue forecast was a little light, and their full year capital expenditures are going to be much higher than expected. I think these investments are justified. Mark Zuckerberg knows what he's doing, but it's not what Wall Street wants to hear in this environment. It's a skittish environment. Now, I can see how Texas Instruments and Tesla could rally on news that there's better than feared, even though Tesla had negative free cash flow to the tune of $2.5 billion. M- Musk is a showman. He was very convincing that his robo-taxi service would be like Airbnb, that you'd summon them and that you can stay in them. I like his elevator analogy, too. At one point, there were professional elevator operators. You'd, you'd tell them what floor you wanted to go on, and they'd stop there. But then we collectively decided to just let anybody push the buttons, everything changed. It could be the same with taxis. But even as there were some winners today, there are also plenty of companies with stocks that look like they're going great guns, only to get crushed intraday. Let me give you an example. Bowie, okay? Now, this stock opened up. Uh, I, I was there. We, we asked uh, Dave Calhoun questions this morning at Squawking Street. And, you know, I, I, they're, they're mixed emotions. The stock opened up at 176, and that was up. That was more than seven bucks above yesterday's close. Whew. Despite the fact that the quarter was truly nothing to write home about with extremely negative cash flow, kind of like Tesla, and no real sense of when management can write the ship. In a good market, Boeing stock would build on that advance. In a bad market, it pirouettes and goes straight down. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Bladder is exactly what happened. I need you to get into the heads of the people who were buying when Boeing opened higher. They didn't care where they bought it, and they got picked off. They're now natural sellers. I see stocks like that all over the place. Real landmines everywhere you look. Take Newcorp, which we had on last night. A fine, the best steel company in the world. I thought CEO Leon Topalian told a good story about how his company missed the quarter. To me, Leon clearly felt badly that he missed guidance, and I think he'll be able to straighten it out fairly soon. But he said that the next quarter will be even weaker. Here's the problem. Too many buyers agreed with me. Newcorp's stock opened at 175. It got real positive. Ran up to 178. But then, like Boeing, the stock pirouetted and fell to 172. Because remember, the quarter was truly disappointing. Only a treacherous market has that kind of action, though. And I don't like treacherous markets. Finally, we had our monthly investing club meeting this morning at uh, at noon today. It's on. You can go listen to it. And as much as I want to think that I like all the stocks we own for the charitable trust that's connected to the club, I found myself couching and hedging and cautioning about so many stocks over the near term that it was quite chilly. When you own more than 30 stocks, you can only recommend a half dozen stocks to buy at this very moment. That's the ultimate sign that cash is rook. It's not king because there are still some stocks that are worth buying right here. If, If cash were king, you'd be selling, selling, and selling. But too few of them right now to justify buying hand over fist. So let me give you the bottom line. We've been in this sell-off for over a month, and I still think it's a dicier time than most investors seem to believe, as you would get if you looked at Meta this evening. That's okay. We have cash for the travel trust. I hope you have some too. Cash may not be king right now, but it certainly isn't pawn either. I want to take calls. I'm going to go to Austin in Massachusetts. Austin. Um, with McDonald's coming in at 300 starting the year, and now it's sitting at just around 270, what can we see coming in like that? This is Austin from Westfield State. Shout out Dr. Fiore. Okay, terrific. Now, we know Chipotle had good numbers, but I have to tell you, I think McDonald's offerings are too expensive. They raise the prices too much, and they've got to cut the price. And nobody wants to have to cut price. But to me, the stock is signaling they need to cut. They raise the price too much. they got to bring them down. Let's go to Arthur, my home state of New Jersey. Arthur. Hey, Jim. How are you? I am good, Arthur. How are you? I'm great, Jim. I just want to say thank you, man. I've been following you for the last 23 years. And I tell you, (laughs) you are on point with so much. I've made a lot of money, and I lost money because I didn't listen to you. Oh, Arthur, you're very kind. I made some good calls and some bad calls. All I want to do is have the the good calls outweigh the bad calls. Let's go to work. Okay, listen, I bought Moderna at $369 a share, and it's killing my portfolio. Yeah. I've been holding on to it for a while, and I said, okay, it's going to come back a little, then it's not coming back, then it goes up, and then it goes down. Jim, what should I do with this? I hate to take the loss because it's a big loss. I know, and we should never care, though, about where a stock came from. we got to care where it's going to, but I agree with you. 
Moderna has special technology. I don't want to lose the stock here, but they announced a collaboration this morning with uh, OpenAI, and I thought that the stock was up eight at one point, and you get right back down. There are sellers everywhere in Moderna. You're going to have to wait until they really do invent the personal vaccines that they promised when they started, and I'm talking about um, mass vaccines, but thank you for your uh, kind words. All right. Cash may not be king right here, but it certainly isn't pawn either. Well, man, tonight, going down. That's what the stock of Otis did today at, uh, after earnings. So, are investors getting a viable dip in the elevator maker? I've got the CEO. Then the legendary Larry Williams is out with a bold call on where the market could be headed. I think you want to know what he's saying, consulting the technicals. And earlier today, we convened our monthly meeting for the CNBC Investing Club members. And we had so many incredible questions that we saved some of them for tonight. And yes, indeed, we read your names. You don't want to miss it, so stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.